Hey there YouTube. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, I thought I'd do this video uh, just after Christmas rather than before it. Uh, I have all your questions, uh, or all ten of them, uh, so it's not going to be a particularly long video, uh, on my uh, tablet here. And I thought I'd uh, just add on, pen on to the end, uh, I thought I'd just show you my, my haul from my birthday uh, and obviously from Christmas yesterday. It's not a massive haul but it's uh, it's pretty good. Um, and uh, I thought that would make a quite a fitting uh, end uh, to the year um, because the chances are I probably won't be posting anything else until either very very late this month or possibly most probably actually into uh, early January uh, so let's uh, let's get this going um, like I said I had 10, ten questions uh, and I'm just gonna I'm basically gonna go down the, the sort of order they ended up in uh, in my comments so there's no particular order um, so let's get going so the first question is from uh, Paul Richardson and he asks do I find the temptation of new projects hard to resist or am I disciplined enough to see things through to the end before even considering anything else? Um, I would say that as far as uh, side projects go, um, I'm basically just as weak-willed as any other wargamer. Um, there's always new things coming out that, that tempt you. Uh, however, I am... Uh, quite disciplined and and also um, I would say finicky in in the terms of uh, I like to finish things that I've started. Um, I mean, if, throughout this, the last couple of years, I've been concentrating on a Napoleonic. I have had other things sneak in, but nothing ever really. Excuse me for a second. I've got something digging into my foot. Um, I've never really properly veered away um, from, from uh, like my main project um, so I'd say yes I do get drawn away by minor side projects but they're never they'd never actually take over from from what I'm you know from, from a major project um, and I'm kind of finicky I'm, I'm 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 sort of my heart is so sort of set on the polynomials at the moment that I find it actually quite hard to try and veer off um, so I'd say that um, I do get tempted and I do do side projects but um, I am uh, disciplined and uh, uh, finicky enough to uh, always have my main project uh, as the major the major goal uh, so that kind of answers that one um, like I say I, th I think it, it, you know it's very difficult not to get tempted by other side projects and occasionally you're obviously you know, if you've got like a particular game coming up, which is from a different system, uh, and you've got to do things to, you know, either add to an, a side army or, or um, you, you've got, you know, like for instance, core space. For instance, when I had that come through, I I spent probably a good, probably three weeks, four weeks, uh, just painting up all the miniatures from that because I really wanted to do that. Um, and at the end of the day, it was a small enough project for for me to, you know, have have a side project. And, and to tell the truth, it was it was different enough to, for for me to sort of quite quite enjoy as well. Um, but don't get me wrong, I, I do uh, really I, I do really enjoy painting Napoleonics. Um, probably more so than anything else uh, I've I've done really since I've got back into wargaming really. Uh, okay, so on to the next question. Uh, this is from uh, Mary Hinge, um, and basically it's uh, asking uh, what would be my dream day of hobbying. Um, I, I don't. I wouldn't say that I could have a really a dream day of hobbying. To tell the truth, um, I suppose you could say that having a massive painting spur uh, could be classed as uh, ideal for me because I, I I really did enjoy that mass painting spur that I had back in sort of um, no, sort of late October November, um, and I was just pumping out battalions um, and I managed to throw in a, a unit of cavalry as well um, so I suppose you could say that if, if I'm highly motivated then that's kind of perfect for me um, I, I mean I, I don't really you know I mean for, for me I mean, I mean 
I, I more or less have every day uh, free to do painting. Um, so, um, you know, for me, an ideal uh, hobby day would be for me to have the motivation and and uh, um, and uh, spur to, to keep going, to keep going, finishing what I'm doing really. Um, like for instance, this month I've had like a real sort of down spur. Um, mainly, main, not not necessarily because I don't really want to paint, but more so because I haven't got the elements that I need for me to be able to be able to paint. Um, like I'm, I'm one of those sort of completionists. I like to have the the complete battalion that I'm going to paint. I like to have the flags. I like to have the basic material. I like to have everything there in hand for me to actually start and finish. And I hate doing things without a, one of those elements. Um, I mean, I've been trying to sort of do some King's German Legion in anticipation of getting the flags and, and uh, the rest of the miniatures in, but I, I just, I've been really struggling. I mean, I've, I've literally got like one figure with his arms on and a few other part completed bodies. And, uh, and, and that's it. That's, uh, that's what I've been doing for like the last three weeks. I've, I've been really quite struggling and, and I still haven't got the flags and I still haven't got the, the, my ideal range of figures to, to actually even start that but uh, the good news is that I have actually um, come into uh, my uh, I handed back my um, my motability car um, and uh, they've upped the bonus that you get uh, for keeping it in good condition um, and uh, I've, I've come in I've basically got like the maximum bonus and um, that's going to, or at least part of that, is going to uh, help me uh, not only uh, be able to fulfil a few bucket list Napoleonic items, um, but also uh, give me uh, a good uh, hobby fund uh, to kick the year off. Um, so although I, I don't think I'll be able to actually uh, complete all of my sort of eight battalions that I need to uh, finish off... Uh, my original sort of projects um but also um you know to, to probably get a good three or four battalions out of that uh, and like i say um to to tick off a few bucket list napoleonic items um which uh more on that when i uh either um order them or uh, have them in hand um so that is that so let's go on to the next uh, this is from uh, BJ Kerno Modelling. Uh, how did I manage to paint all of the Chasseurs de Cheval uh, as cavalry seems to set my motivation? Uh, yes, that's very true. Um, I'm not a great lover of uh, painting cavalry. Um, I'm one of those sort of strange people that I really love cavalry when it's when it's complete, but when it comes to actually painting them. Um, I find that it really sort of drains my motivation quite quickly. Um, and to tell you the truth, uh, Chasseurs de Cheval, um, I mean, they can be draining, but I tend not to do multiple cavalry units at one time. Um, I mean, if you think about it, the, the sort of three units of cavalry that I did, I mean, I suppose I, you could say that I've done in over the last year um, five units of, uh, well, four, four units of cavalry and touching up uh, and modifying one. Um, and that is like that's probably the most cavalry I've ever painted in my life, to tell the truth. Um, I mean, I've never really, even back in the, the, the my old sort of GW days in the sort of the eighties, um, when I, I suppose uh, there were really, I mean, I suppose there were other figure companies around, but I sort of, you know, as far as I was concerned, at that sort of uh, sort of fairly young age and. Um, sort of GW stuff is really the sort of only sort of figures that I had any really, really interest in. Um, but I really never even, I suppose I was probably painting for probably a good 10 years um, from sort of like my early teens um, going up into sort of like my early 20s I suppose. Well maybe a little bit before that but say sort of like sort of 17, 18 was probably the sort of time when my painting was starting to peter out. Um, I've never really, I don't think I've ever really painted a, a whole cavalry unit. I mean, I think I painted figures on horseback, um, but never really uh, a whole unit. Um, I think probably the most I ever painted was maybe five, and they're probably Imperial Guard Rough Riders, the old school ones, um, which 
um, I didn't particularly paint very well and uh, I think they just kind of in the end you know got shoved to the side really um, so I mean I suppose the, the the best way to do cavalry in my opinion is I mean I've been trying all sorts of different ways to try and improve my motivation to do these things and I tend to now paint all the horses first or as many of them as I can uh, and do the guys last um, and something that I always do is I always leave the uh, the command figures to the very very end uh, and sometimes even including the horses and I find that that helps spur me on uh, to be able to actually complete them because uh, I do always really enjoy painting uh, uh, command groups so I suppose that kind of answers that question and uh, another little hint from me is uh, I'd say the worst cavalry unit to paint Hussars. I'll probably never be touching another unit of Hussars again. Although I must admit, French ones are tempting, but uh, I don't think I can actually uh, motivate myself even to, uh, to to attempt to to attempt those guys. Um, okay, so let's go on to the next. Uh, here we go from uh, John Wayne Everett. Um, what are the best figures? 28, 15, 10 or 6 millimeter, and the best price also. Um, well, I'll, I'll submit, um, I've always kind of been a 28 mil uh, type of guy. Um, I have delved into 15 mil when I first got back. Well, actually, I, I don't, the, the very first uh, figures that I painted when I first got back into wargaming was uh, was uh, drop zone commander figures so I suppose you could say 10 millimeter um, they were the f that's the, really the first time I ever painted uh, anything of that, that that sort of scale apart from maybe uh, epic back in the day um, epic GW from the old I uh, can't even remember what the game was called now space marine was it can't remember anyway um, uh, so let's think. I've I've done ten mil. I've done uh, fifteen mil. I was, I was experimenting with some Flames of War stuff again uh, quite early into when I got back into war gaming. Uh, I did enjoy painting fifteen mil, um, and maybe uh, one day in a future video I'll, I'll actually get out my uh, small little collection of uh, Flames of War stuff and, and show you guys. Uh, I've still actually got massive heap of of uh, um, flames of war stuff uh, in my mountain um, but I think I I think the actual video that was going to uh, have those guys in when I was doing my mountain videos um, I, I basically something went wrong with it and I had to sort of uh, basically not post it and, and, and I was going to re-record it and I never got around to it um, so maybe at some point I'll actually go through uh, that stuff again but like I, I, th I think I did mention that uh, the trouble with that is that all my flames of war stuff because that's like like probably the, the the most likely thing not to get painted is kind of all at the very deepest crevice of my mountain now so it's actually quite quite a bit of a pain to actually get to um but i would say i mean i do like 15 mil and i would like to um delve into that sort of realm again um but i think Price wise, 15 mil isn't always uh, as cheap as as, as you think. Um, but I mean, I'm I don't know. I mean, for me, 28 mil is probably the best, um, and I think uh, it's fairly decent uh, value for money, um, especially in comparison to to, to the more expensive uh, uh, figures these days, like sort of GW stuff, etc. Okay, uh, next one. Um, this is from uh, BMP. Uh, why and how did you get into this hobby, and what keeps you in this great hobby of ours? Um, well, getting back into painting, I, I suppose that's probably a good point to to, to start. Um, I probably got back into painting about six years ago, um, maybe seven now. Um, and it was all to do with um, coming across Drop Zone Commander at the time. Um, it was it was quite competitively priced. Um, it had everything in the box. I quite liked the idea of the sort of the scale of it. Um, however, when I 
sort of um, you know painted up the starter set and was starting to think about expanding um, I found that the prices weren't really as cheap as they as they seemed um, and I soon sort of moved on to something else uh, probably within a few months um, and I think after that I'd, I'd been I delved into Flames of War um, this is again it's really the first time I've ever really delved into sort of painting World War II miniatures um, and obviously I've never really painted 15 mil before um, and they they hooked me uh, quite a bit actually because I thought well I don't really have the space for a mass table um, I would really like to sort of go into sort of like uh, Napoleonics but I don't think I've got the room for, for like um, a massive French and British army because I sort of solo play I always have to collect two armies um, and so at that time 15 mil was like the way to go um, plus I'm, I'm a massive uh, military history fan so um, you know all my life I've since uh, since I was a little kid uh, I've, uh, I've been into military history and and uh, everything to do with uh, with with military stuff um, you know it wasn't it was kind of it wasn't rocket science to to sort of uh, um, you know give me something in 15 mil uh, World War two which doesn't take up much space um, and still looks really good to uh, to sort of hook, hook me um, so I suppose I was doing like you know flames of war for a while I actually like I say got got in quite a heap of stuff um, but then I ultimately got hooked t towards uh, bolt action um, because obviously you know 15 mil yeah you can put a fair amount of detail into that but when it comes to uh, you know a fair decent amount of, of, of detail you've got to go uh, 28 mil um, and that's when my my uh, bolt action uh, phase hit me and I was pretty hardcore on that uh, for, for quite a few years um, I mean I've got a whole bunch of uh, armies um, that I've a lot of them I haven't even played with to tell you the truth um, I think I've played like literally five games of bolt action ever um, and I always ended up using my Germans and my Americans and, and that was more or less it um, but armies wise I've got uh, Japanese, I've got Marine Corps I've got uh, French, I've got Italians, um, I've got British, um, I've got half, well not even half but a, a small chunk of Finnish. Uh, all these uh, guys are, are covered in, in my video library if you look right the way back towards the sort of start. Um, and uh, you know I've got to say I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of a lot of my uh, uh, by action armies. Um, and then I suppose uh, I think Saga was the next thing that I kind of got into. Um, I've never really been a massive fan of sort of ancient history. Um, I remember when I first started university, I was originally going to do just straight history, um, and I think within the first week, I'd uh, gone and changed my course to modern history. Um, because I didn't really want to go into all the sort of religious stuff that the sort of ancient type, ancient history c combines, um, all the stuff to do with like you know the the hundreds of different bishops and and all you know everything's very sort of church orientated and I really didn't want to bog myself down with all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I soon changed to uh, modern history, uh, but at the same time um, I've always had. Uh, an interest in sort of like the you know the Romans and the Greeks uh, not so much the sort of Vikings and stuff like that but uh, strangely enough when I got into Saga my, my very first army was, was Vikings for, for some sort of bizarre reason um, so you know I suppose my my sort of interests in sort of military history have broadened but um, you, you know, at that, that particular time, um, Saga was really sort of a side project. Um, and again, I sort of, you know, I kept doing bolt action uh, as, as my sort of mainstay. Um, but 
you know, again, I ended up with um, four, four or five Saga armies um, of quite large size um, because I found that playing uh, the larger point games are, was actually more fun than playing sort of four, four to six points as sort of the, the normal sort of sized game. Um, but if you sort of boost that to sort of ten points, then it actually becomes uh, a hell of a lot more uh, fun to play. Uh, and I've probably say, I'll probably say that um, I've probably played more Saga uh, games than than a lot of other things. Uh, I mean, I've never actually played Flames of War. Um, I found the rules very very difficult uh, and, and um, in in some respects unrealistic. Um, and that kind of uh, sort of turned me off of, uh, of of actually playing that sort of system. Uh, but at the same time, I really enjoyed painting the miniatures. Um, and then, of course, after Saga, um, that's when I sort of uh, started to. I think it was when they released the Waterloo um, starter set. I decided to jump. Um, like I say, I've always had a, a, an interest to collect Napoleonics. But I was always worried about the space to keep large armies in. Um, when they first released the, the sort of start set, I thought, wow, you know, this is a, um, a, a really decent price. B, gives me everything that I need. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just collect, uh, you know, battalion, uh, uh, no, sorry, not a battalion. Uh, a brigade or two, you know, um, and uh, and I'll have the room to sort of keep it in, and um, I'll you know I'll be able to sort of delve into Napoleonics, which, which is something that's always kind of um, that I've always kind of really wanted to do. And uh, of course, uh, that soon uh, digressed into uh, me deciding to collect entire cores, um, even though not cores. Divisions, um, even though uh, I've kind of abridged them a little bit, um, so they're not quite the sort of grand scale of, of uh, you know multiple battalions per division, um, and more so one division, one battalion per division. But um, you know we're talking a fair chunk of figures, um, and as you can see, uh, they take up both of these. Quite big, quite big and uh, deep shelves here and here. Um, so that hopefully covers that. I'm kind of uh, um, going a little bit beyond these questions, but um, it's uh, like I said, I've never done a Q and A before, so uh, I'll probably expand on the questions a little bit. Uh, next question uh, from Victor C. Cena. What is your favourite book and why? Um, to tell the truth, I've never really been uh, a massive uh, book reader. Um, obviously, when I was doing my uh, history degree, I, I had to—I had no choice but to do lots of reading. But um, I've never really—I would never count reading as one of my hobbies. Um, I tend to uh, read. Um, I mean, reference books is a different story. But as far as like sort of. Um, you know, a, a, a autobiography or a memoirs or um, a 40k book or a Star Wars book, stuff like that. Um, I've never really um, been the sort of person to sit down and read a book. Uh, I always tended to uh, read uh, just before I go to bed. Um, and to tell the truth, I, I kind of still do that even today. Um, but on that point it doesn't mean that I haven't read books that I've really liked uh, and, and have uh, sort of reread. Um, so I'd say, um, I'll just double check on the question so I don't go off on a uh, on a tangent, um, I'd find it hard to say my favourite book um, but I'll just spit off a few uh, that I've really enjoyed uh, and have uh, read multiple times. Um, the first, uh, I suppose you could say, it's a, it's a, I think they're called the Starbuck Chronicles uh, by Benno Cornwell. Uh, I, I really enjoyed those books with uh, Nathaniel Starbuck, um, a guy from the uh, the north of uh, 
uh, America uh, ending up uh, joining the Confederates uh, and uh, as a sort of a, 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 a lieutenant um, and uh, sort of uh, his adventures throughout through the uh, American Civil War. Um, I think I've read f three of the books. I don't. Even, I don't. I'm not sure if there is a, is, a, is actually any more. Um, but I did really enjoy those, uh, and I have read them like two or three times through. Um, what else? Uh, there's a. I can't remember the name of the book, but it's a 40k book by I think Dan Abbott, and it's about Imperial Guard or Imperial Navy uh, flyers uh, flying Thunderbolt fighters. Um, against chaos um that book i i absolutely loved um i've always been I've, I've although i haven't really delved into 40k since i was uh, a kid um i've always liked the imperial guard um and i've always uh, had a fascination uh, about being a fighter pilot so uh, put those two things together um, and uh, that book uh, immediately uh, hits my buttons and uh, I absolutely love that book. I don't know why I can't remember the name of it um, but I think I've read it like five or six times since I've had it. Uh, I've got like the hardback edition um, and uh, I've kind of been looking around to see if there's actually like an audiobook version of it because I'd really like to uh, to uh, hear the audio version to sort of see what sort of uh, the, the way that it's um what sort of you know how it's sort of read, read, read out to you uh, from the audiobook style um and then sort of star wars books as well I've, I've, i'm quite a, quite a big star wars fan um i have been my entire life um and although i'm not a mass like i say i'm not a mass book reader i have read obviously the uh Heir to the Emperor and all, all, all that sort of series. I uh, really enjoyed those. I've read those through uh, two or three times. Um, the Rogue Squadron uh, series of books. Uh, again, uh, you know, slightly fighter, fighter pilot orientated. Uh, so kind of, again, those sort of books really, uh, I really did enjoy those. Um, and um, that's probably about it. I mean, I've, I've read loads of sort of memoirs and and autobiographies from, from sort of uh, all, all sorts of militaries um, and I, I, again there are uh, several books of, of uh, within that sort of genre that that I've read many times and, and really do enjoy um, although uh, no titles actually spring to mind at, at this particular moment um, and there's one particular book uh, again I can't uh, really remember the title perhaps one, one day I'll uh, actually uh, try and hunt out a few of my favourite sort of memoirs and autobiographies from sort of military guys and and, uh, and and do a video on them. Um but this particular book is about a volunteer uh artilleryman uh during the Boer War. Um and it's a really interesting uh good read. Uh and again that book I've read uh, three or four times. So like I say I'm not a massive reader but that doesn't mean I don't read. I'm just very very slow at reading. Um, you know, sort of 10 or 20 minutes reading a night on a big book. Uh, you, you're talking months before I'd finish it. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, Lee Hughes. This one's from Lee Hughes. Uh, Favourite period after Napoleonics? Probably World War II, I'd say. Um, but my... At this particular moment in time, um, I'm kind of off of painting anything else but Napoleonics, uh, but that I would say that is probably my favourite uh, period after uh, Napoleonics. Um, although modern combat is, is uh, could quite easily cr creep into that because I do like um, painting uh, sort of modern modern military stuff. Although I haven't, I haven't really got a very big collection of it. Um, this one is from uh, Wargaming with Gary. What red do I use for the British? Uh, okay, uh, it's quite an easy question. Um, I've, I believe I've been asked this many times before. Um, this is it. Just literally the Vallejo flat red. Uh, that's what I use. Um, I don't know if it's a particular mix. I mean, I've, this is the only one I've ever, ever had. So I don't know if, if, if the... Uh, 
if the you know you would, you'd get a, if I brought another bottle whether it would be exactly the same red or, and, and I'm just lucky to have this like perfect mixture but for some bizarre reason it just goes on uh, really well um, and uh, you know I hardly I hardly even have to highlight it to tell the truth I mean I shade it and, and, and attempt highlighting but I generally just use the same colour to uh, to highlight back over after a shade um, it's such a bright uh, a bright red um, it's got, it seems to have a lot of depth to it um, and, and like I say I don't know if it's just this particular bottle you know maybe it is like the perfect flat red um, or whether it's just uh, that's the way it looks to me uh, but that's that's the red I use let's go for the next um, we're getting towards the end now uh, Leon T66 what would be your dream job if you could do anything you wanted um, that would be uh, quite an easy question. Um, I uh, have basically grown up my entire childhood uh, wanting to uh, go into the RAF uh, as a pilot. Um, I also had my sort of little career path. Uh, you know, if I couldn't get into the Air Force, I'd join the Navy as a pilot. If I couldn't get into the Navy as a pilot, I'd join the Army as a pilot. Um, and if that all failed, then perhaps I'd even go down to the depths of joining the police and trying to become a pilot. Uh, through the police. Um, however, when I was um, 11 years old, uh, I basically uh, had a illness that uh, destroyed my entire dreams of ever being able to join the military at all. Um, so, as sort of time went on, if I could choose, if I could suddenly say, you know, um, I could go into whatever career I, I wanted uh, sort of, as far as sort of dream career would go uh, I'd say probably now it would probably be uh, as an infantry officer um, rather than flying um, but uh, again obviously it's just a dream job um, so that kind of answers that uh, next uh, the last question uh, I, I, I was going to say like uh, I even managed to drag a Q&A out uh, to a ridiculous amount of time uh, uh, this is from Sean O's World of Figures uh, what's your next project going to be uh, well it, I have actually got something that's going to be um, a next project to say but obviously it's only going to be a side project it's not really going to be anything super major uh, and I'll, I'll kind of go into that um, in a few minutes when I uh, I think I'll actually end this video and, and do a, a, another video straight after uh, and I'll just show you uh, basically what I've got over my birthday and, and, and Christmas period uh, which does also include my next little side project uh, so I'll, I'll sort of fulfil that in uh, in the next video so uh, that's the end of this one hope you enjoyed it uh, sorry that I kind of went off on a tangent on some of the questions uh, and uh, you know maybe in the future uh, perhaps I'll uh, have another Q&A um because uh you know it's, it's good to uh to get to know uh people that you just see on the internet um i mean as much as i'd like to come to uh salute and uh, meet all you guys uh sort of mobility wise uh, it's not going to happen um but maybe one day uh, if i manage to get a wheelchair at some point um but uh that's the end for this one and uh i'll catch you uh in the next one because I'm literally gonna uh, like I say do my little birthday and Christmas haul uh, video up uh, straight after this so catch you all later bye bye if I can find the off button <laughs>